I have here the Fisher Price Beat Bow toy, um, and I'm going to show the process for adapting it. I'm not going to get heavily into the soldering and that sort of thing. It's more about for people who already have a sense of how to do the soldering and that sort of thing. I'm just going to show the concept of where to adapt this toy. Um, right now I have it connected to a big red switch here and so if I press the switch you can see the behavior of the toy. Uh, he'll start his stomach lights up and he'll start to dance a little bit. And so the one drawback to this toy is that if I press the switch again it'll actually switch to a new track on him. So I can keep flipping and it'll keep switching the track on him. And so the one drawback to that is that if you're using the toy to demonstrate cause and effect principles, um, usually it's ideal if it's a timed switch. So you press the switch, um, the toy runs for a little while and then it stops and then the child can press the switch again. The Beepo actually continues to listen for more inputs while um, it's in process essentially. So it will both time out after a little while and it will change the track. And so, um, you know, it's something to think about before uh, starting an adaptation like this is what, what's the behavior of the switch and uh, will it be appropriate for the child? So if you're looking for really simple cause and effect, clear responses from the toy, you could still, for example, offer the switch um, uh, to the child and then take it as they're, they're watching and then offer it again. So there are ways that you can actually, you know, make it clear, but really it's, uh, I just want to be clear about that in case, um, so people can plan appropriately uh, as to what they'd like to do with a toy. And so you can see I've installed a quarter inch um, mini uh, jack on the bottom here. Uh, and so I'm going to walk you through sort of how that's connected into the toy. You notice I also tend to cover the speaker on the back because I um, some of the children that I've worked with uh, in the past or that I've designed these for um, are children who sometimes have difficulty with uh, multi-sensory input and uh, so reducing the sound can also sometimes be beneficial. So what I'm going to do is um, I've already taken out the screws on the bottom. There's five screws around the perimeter down here and I've taken all those out. Now I'm just going to remove the bottom. And just make sure that you put these uh, buttons aside and that you don't lose the little um, sort of uh, suction cup type things that are in there that can fall out. Those are necessary if you want to keep the toy in its original working condition. Uh, what we're going to do today won't actually stop the toy from working in its original condition either. You will find some adaptations out there that actually solder right onto the switch of the unit um, and it actually will stop it from working typically. What I'm going to show you today actually will keep it uh, running intact. So what we're going to do is head into the toy here, we open it up, and we're going to take out this little plate. So I've already loosened it up, and uh, I'm just going to take out the last little screws here. Last couple of turns, and we pull that right out. And so you can see there's an example of how I almost lost that little plunger piece, so I have to make sure that I keep that, that little plunger piece close by. I'll take all that stuff out. Okay, now what we have is the little circuit board that I just pulled up there, the little brown part. On the back side of that is where the adaptation takes place. Now, excuse my solder job because I am a terrible solder, which is why you shouldn't learn from me in these videos, but um, it also kind of shows how easy this can be. Um, Oh, that's a terrible joint. But basically what's happening here is that there's two different um, connect, uh, solder connection points. Uh, one is coming in from this line here on the outside. See this green line that comes along and it goes to a solder point. One comes from the upper part down to the outside. There's actually three in there. There's one between them that you can't really see. Um, so you have to be careful to solder to the outside two points without joining them together with solder, which you can see they are quite small. I had a little bit of a hard time, admittedly myself, but it did work and it's actually sturdy. Once you close it up inside, it's actually also a pretty protected environment in there, even if the toy moves around. So what I have seen some people doing is soldering right to the edges of this little switch here. They'll put a dot of solder on one side and a dot of solder on the other side. The problem with that is that you um, can't use the switch anymore because these little plungers that are on the bottom of uh, the switches will no longer activate it. 
So that's personally the way that I like to go about it. So that's really the, what the whole um, adaptation is. You, you um, solder the two solder points to the outside two points of the three points here. And you're going to take your two wires and run them around into uh, this little quarter inch uh, mini jack right here. And so the, it's a little square quarter inch mini jack. So I've taken a drill essentially and I've just drilled right through the plastic there. I started it with a small pilot hole, then I went up to probably a quarter inch bit. Sometimes I'll rotate the drill a little bit in the hole as I'm drilling or go up just a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. Because what you want to do is get this side here. I'm going to pull up this switch and you can see you want to get that piece there, which is a, a quarter inch, um, to fit through. But it can't be so large that when you try to screw this little ring on that it would just fall through. So you do have to make sure you don't go too large. You will get a lot of excess plastic and so you can kind of file that out. Just you know, grab a screwdriver or something that you can kind of scrape away the, the excess that builds up. But once you get a hole that fits it through you just thread it basically. Um, and I can show you the connections for that mini jack are basically just um, let's see, let me get the best angle on it here. So you can see it's, um, I use the two outer pieces there. There's one that's sort of on the, the top side of it, and then there's two on the bottom. Uh, the middle one, I believe on the mono, it might be okay to solder that one, but I'd I'm not 100% sure. I'd recommend just doing the outside one as I have here because I know that works properly. Um, I believe they are the same connector, but I'd have to refresh my memory on that. So all you're doing is you're, you know, you're stripping a couple pairs of wires. You're going to solder them. You can twist them actually first onto the little um, receiver connector pieces there. Um, and then you're going to take your wire and then you're going to solder onto this board here. Once you're done, all you're going to do is basically put that board back in. Uh, you'll put your um, all the pieces back together. The, the two switches go on this side, so that's these ones here. You'll pop both of them in uh, and basically just put all the screws back. Everything just kind of clicks right back together. Um, there are other places you can adapt this toy. You can actually adapt down here as well. I believe it's these two points. Um, and what that does is it actually adapts this switch here, but that's the one where um, the Beepo allows you to click it and then it'll play some music and then it'll get you to say something and then it'll repeat back what you say. So if a child really liked that, um, that could be another opportunity is to look at adapting that as well. And you could even put in a second switch board if you wanted or, or just do that one. Um, I find from a cause and effect perspective that that one isn't as clear generally when it comes to um, activating. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, you'll put in your screws on the bottom, close it all up, and uh, it should be ready to, uh, to activate. So hopefully you found that helpful. And um, you know, it's fairly straightforward once you get into it. Um, as I said, I prefer people look up their own soldering skills because I'm not the most skilled with it. And it's better to get... Um, you know, the proper information, make sure that you do get a lead-free solder. And, uh, you know, you can really learn the skill quite quickly. So thank you very much for watching.